All right, listen, buddy, I've covered March of the Machine Aftermath pretty extensively on this channel, and right now I'm enjoying the aftermath of a protein breakfast, brother. Yeah, so listen, initially these boxes were about $85 or so. At the time of release, this was egregious, to say the least. 24 packs of five cards each, this was just a bizarre and blatant cash grab. The problem was, some of the cards in the box are actually really dope, man. So let's take a look at a couple because the boxes are down to a reasonable price point. Listen, man, a five card pack should be two bucks, at most. I'm sure that Wizards could make money if these packs were two dollars. I mean, come on. It was pretty crazy that a pack contained five cards from such a small set. That was about four dollars or so at release. That's nuts. Fast forward to today, currently a box of Aftermath containing 24 packs of five cards each is $42, including shipping. So if we factor in tax, that's $1.89 per pack. I think this is fair and is finally in line with what a box should cost. The set released in May, and at that time I dismissed it as a cash grab aberration. That said, I did a bunch of videos on the commanders. It was kind of neat, you know, all these D-Spark Planeswalkers made for very flavorful commanders. If you wanted one of these Planeswalkers in the command zone, now's your chance, brother. Take a look at Nissa, Resurgent Animist over here. Two and a green for a legendary creature. Elf Scout, it's a 3-3 with a landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. Then if this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an elf or elemental card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This landfall ability is absolutely fantastic. Reminiscent of the old Lotus Cobra. Supercharged Lotus Cobra, dude. Be wary of that in the jungle. In a landfall deck, Lotus Cobra does a ton of work. I have a Karametra landfall deck and it has about 15 incidental elves and or elementals. So it's unlikely I'd run out in the course of a game. And I designed that deck before I ever heard of a resurgent animist. This card is about $20 at present. And you got old Calix out here looking like a Balenciaga model. One green and white for a legendary enchantment creature, Human Druid, it's a 2-2 with Constellation. Whenever this guy or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Whenever Calix or an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may create a token that's a copy of target non-legendary enchantment you control. Do this only once each turn. Calix is about $10, give or take. This is unparalleled value in a Selesnya enchantment deck. Duplicating your powerful enchantments is a good way to outvalue your opponents. Plus he has that sweet outfit, dude. Check that out. Show off them thighs, brother. He ain't doing all those squats for giggles. Karn Legacy Reforged. Five generic mana for a legendary artifact creature, Gollum. He's a star star. His power and toughness are equal to the greatest mana value among artifacts you control. I don't know if this is a he. I said he, dude, because he looks like a dude. At the beginning of your upkeep, add colorless for each artifact you control. This mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. This guy has this weird restriction. It can't be used to cast non-artifact spells, but it can be used for activated abilities. You know Karn, dude. He hits the military press at the gym, brother. He's got them big shoulders. This guy's the th shrug master. Hey, man, are you done with the shrug bar? Nah, dude, I got 11 more sets. This is a really neat artifact, Commander. It's 5-5 on ETB because he's an artifact you control. Even better, he's a great role player in one of your artifact decks. This guy's about 10 bucks too. Look at this brother out here. Sarkhan Soul of Flame is one blue and a red. Legendary creature, Human Shaman, it's a 2-4. Dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. I like that. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you may have this guy become a copy of it until end of turn, except its name is Sarkhan, Soul of Flame, and it's a legendary in addition to its other types. Imagine if you get your dragon out there. You know what I'm saying? Double triggers, double the fun. This guy looks like a young Jason Momoa after he married his the love of his life, Lisa Bonet. It's a love story for the ages, brother. This is a solid role player in your dragon decks. Six bucks for this little guy. This guy, Obnixilus, Captive Kingpin. Two black and a red for a legendary creature demon. It's a 4-3 with flying and trample. Whenever one or more opponents each lose exactly one life, put a plus one, plus one counter on this guy. Exile the top card of your library. Until your next end step, you may play that card. Crazy value on this commander. Solid build around that wants as many instances of one damage triggers as you can squeeze into a commander deck. I like the art. The flavor's on point, dude. He's a demon in a suit. He's a threat. Just like House Speaker Mike Johnson. The showcase is actually pretty gorgeous too, man. I'm going to put that up here. Then you got Kiora, Sovereign of the Deep. Three green and a blue for a legendary creature. Merfolk Noble to 4-5 with Vigilance and Ward 3. 
Whenever you cast a Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus, or Serpent spell from your hand, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is that spell's mana value. You may cast a spell with mana value less than X from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is a really neat build around Commander with a sea monster theme and a very unique feel. Ramping into big sea creatures and casting free spells sounds like a lot of fun. And there are a lot of cards that are only a few cents, but there's some neat build arounds here. I mean, look at Tazri out there, stalwart survivor. Two and a white for a legendary creature, human warrior, it's a 3 3. Each creature you control has tap, add one mana of any of this creature's colors. So you're basically making a bunch of mana dorks out there. Spend this mana only to activate an ability of a creature. Activate only if this creature has another activated ability. Very bizarre. So it has Wooberg and tap, mill five cards, put all creature cards with activated abilities that aren't mana abilities from among the milled cards into your hand. Activated ability, a tribal brother, that's a sweet way to go. Opens up a wide variety of strats, a five color commander, looks like a lot of fun, man. Not all these decks have to be, you know, A plus power level. You can have some B minuses in there too, dude. Now there are a ton of other sweet commanders. I'm not going to go into all of them out there, but you got Narset, you got all kinds of cool stuff. There are also a bunch of solid little role players like Training Grounds. So that's a blue mana for an enchantment. Activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than one mana. In the early days of Commander, this was a pretty expensive card. This reprint brought it down to just a couple bucks, man. Very affordable for the power of grants in the right deck. All right, so you just sat through six minutes of nonsense. So what's the point of this video? I don't know, dude. I was just excited about the relatively cheap price point for this box. At the time, I wanted to get a few packs when this thing released, but I was really put off by the rather exorbitant price point. It just seemed like a really fun set to open, you know what I mean? Something different. Five little cards, blah, 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 but I ain't paying five, you know, four to a dollar a card out here, dude. Come on. There are so many legends, so many neat little role player cards that slot pretty easily into commander decks. I got a couple singles back then, but kind of forgot about it after all the hyped up releases this year. Commander Masters kind of sucked the air out of the Magic Universe for a few months with all those crazy reprints. So at $45, including tax and shipping, is this worth a buy? Is it a good deal at that price? Do any of those cards interest you? Well listen man, I gotta be honest with you, I picked up a box, I plan to give it to myself for Christmas. You know what I mean? Two bucks a pack, that makes sense to me. Don't judge me, bro. Even better commanders fall victim to the excitement and hype. Though I'm glad I'm so price sensitive. I can wait six months for the price to kind of bottom out here. I think that's probably the bottom. You know, 42 bucks. I don't know. Who knows, man? In any case, that was my price point for buying in. You know, and that's generally a good lesson. Good things come to those who wait, so be patient. I love you guys. This is Nikki G from Better Commander signing off.